All right, health's back up. Health's back down. Health's back up. <laughs> that spell is so good. All right, here we go. We're getting some shots in, getting some shots in. That sanctuary is paying dividends. Look at that damage that we're doing with the Sword of White Woe. Weakness to Magicka paying off and boom. Just like that, level one. Every Elder Scrolls player knows the build starts right here at the beginning with the most important choice of all, the name. And of course, you want something that fits the character and the build. And for that, we'll be drawing inspiration from probably the most popular spell swords right now, our good friends, the Witchers, out from the backwoods of Poland, taking the global cinema by storm. Good for them, that's awesome. But they are exactly what this build is going to try to be embodying. So with that being said, we're going to hearken back to the most famous Witcher of all and name ourselves Gerald, which is only one letter different, but feels completely wrong. <laughs> Now, before we hop into the race breakdown here for our spell sword character, I do again just want to preface and reinforce kind of what I said earlier, which is the theme of this build. And that will be a traditional spell sword going 50 50. Spell sword, 50% spell, 50% sword. Between the physical aspects and the magical aspects. Because, of course, if you start wavering to one side more than the other, the recommendations for the build will then, of course, change. So, since we are going to be existing in these two separate worlds, the real physical world and then the elemental magical world, we, of course, need a character that's focused on one thing, and that is balance balance of bonuses as well as balance of attributes. And the first race that we're going to talk to fits that word exactly, and that is the dark. Elf. And this becomes clear immediately when looking at our skill bonuses. The Dark Elf gets a plus 5 to Athletics. We also have a Destruction of plus 10, which is going to be an excellent secondary damage source again, supporting our physical use of weapons. A Light Armor of 5, which is going to be the best way to keep us nice and nimble, and I think just fits this style of character the best. Which in my head is a kind of nimble, sprightly, fantasy D&D style character duelist that's going to run around shooting fireballs out of one hand and stabbing really hard with the other. Can't do that if we're wearing heavy armor because you'd be too damn slow. We also get a plus five to long blade, plus five to marksman, plus five to mysticism, and a plus 10 to short blade. Now, when we step back and observe this list as a whole, again, this fits perfectly with that theme, like I said, of balance. We have multiple sources of damage. We have mysticism for things like absorb health, absorb fatigue, magical debuffs that are going to support our physical attacks. And then we also have the athletics, the light armor to keep us nice and light and moving around, shooting fireballs in one hand and stabbing with the other, which again is all this class and play style is about. And this theme of balance again is reflected in their attributes as well. Dark Elves start with a 40 to strength, 40 to intelligence, 40 to agility, 50 to speed, and a 40 to endurance, which makes them a great all-arounder. The only thing really lacking there for the spell sword kind of style is that 30 to willpower, but you will get a little bit bigger magical pool with that 40 intelligence. Additionally, we get two specials as well. One is the Ancestor Guardian, which is a nice sanctuary for 50 points. Sanctuary again, plays into that dodge chance, makes it much harder for your character to get hit, again being that nimble fantasy fighter. And then we also just get a 75% resistance to fire, which cannot be ignored. Fire, of course, one of the most common elemental damage types in the game. So wrapping up with the Dark Elf, I think it's pretty clear to see that they are very balanced. They are meant to be that spell sword character. They're very fast. They're very light. Multiple sources of damage. Perfect for that skirmishing, magical fighting character that all of our fighters wind up being. But there is also a second race that's perfect for this kind of hybrid caster role, and it's one you probably didn't expect, and that would be the Argonian. And although this isn't something you traditionally probably think of as a spell sword character, let's look at their skill bonuses here. They are going to start with a plus five to alchemy, plus 15 to athletics. Always love to see plus 15. Fits into this skirmishing playstyle very, very well. And of course, is the highest bonus we can get while in character creation. Plus five to illusion, five to medium armor, five to mysticism, five to spear, and five to unarmored. So again, very, very balanced. A nice mix of physical weapon skills, armor skills, and magical skills that allow for buffs, debuffs to be applied while in combat. And additionally, like the Dark Elves, their attributes reflect that theme of balance as well. And particularly for the female Argonian, starting out with a 40 to strength, 50 to intelligence, 40 to willpower, 40 to agility, 
and a 40 to speed, lacking only in the endurance and personality department. Now I've bought up Willpower twice now. What does this mean for this particular build style? Well, Willpower is the primary attribute used when determining whether or not we're going to be able to cast a spell. It also plays into determining how well we can resist paralysis effects. And if you've played Marwind enough, you know there's plenty of them out there in the game. And sure, you may say, Coffee, that sounds well and good for the spell part of Spell Sword, but what about the sword part? Well, willpower even plays into your starting fatigue. So the Argonian really is, again, perfectly cut out for that hybrid style, physical damage, buff through magical abilities kind of character. Additionally, we can look down here at their specials. They get a resist disease, which eh, we could ignore, a immunity to poison, and then a nice fun little role-playing ability with water breathing. So again, stepping back, looking at the entire package here, the attributes, the bonuses, the specials, our Dark Elves and our Argonians were clearly built to be those hybrid fighter caster style characters, the true traditional spell swords. Now, you may be saying, hey, I've done a million Dark Elves. I want to try something different. If I had to recommend a runner up for a spell sword style character, I most likely would go with a Breton. They're incredibly effective spell casters, but I am not going to do a breakdown here on the Breton because I want to do something that leans much more on the spell side and do a future video on a battle mage style build. So again, not going to do a breakdown here, but this would be my third place runner up. Now for the sake of today's video, I am going to go with the Dark Elf. Again, I think these are just the perfect jack of all trades kind of character. They're very, very flexible and perfectly in tune with trying to be sure that fighty spell casting skirmisher. Now, after we've selected our race, we, of course, need to create our custom class. And this, again, will depend heavily on what a spell sword means to you. But for the sake of the build, again, I'm going for that 50-50 traditional Witcher style route. So for our specialization, we'll start by selecting combat. So all the items here on the list will be getting that plus five bonus. And here you can see some key abilities such as long blade, such as athletics, spear if you're going for that Argonian character. And this will just help play into our primary source of damage, which is of course going to be our weapons themselves. After selecting our specialization, we'll move down to the favorite attributes. And for the first, we'll be leaving it as strength. Now strength, super, super important for any character that is going to rely mainly on a melee weapon. Strength, of course, scales our raw damage output, as well as increases our encumbrance, which makes us nice and fast and nimble, and also increases our maximum fatigue pool, allowing us to land more hits and not fail casting our spells as much because our current fatigue does play into our spell casting formulas as well. And speaking of spell casting, we will be taking as our second favorite attribute, willpower. Sticking to that balanced theme, part physical, part magical, we'll be splitting our attributes, strength and willpower. Once our attributes are locked in, we can move on to our major skills, the first of which I'll be taking as Long Blade. Great way to get a little additional reach since we'll most likely be wearing light or alternatively medium armor if that's more your style. But there's also just a lot of amazing Long Blades in the game that support this play style. Thinking of things like Chrysomir, thinking of things like Ice Blade of the Monarch. There are so many great enchanted items that fit thematically with a Spell Sword style character. For our second major skill, we of course want an armor skill. I will be taking light armor for my particular version of this build. Medium armor also totally viable, but just in my own head. Spell swords are, are not like heavily armored knights that throw a fireball every now and then. There's something totally different. After light armor, we want to begin introducing that magical balance to our skills here and take destruction as a major skill. This will play in nicely with that innate 10 point skill bonus that we do get from being a dark elf. And something I do want to point out here with the destruction skill itself is that this is not just fireballs and lightning bolts and all that awesome fun stuff that we typically think of when we think of destruction, which is raw damage. Destruction is also all of our debuffs. So things like weakness to magicka, weakness to fire, and those kind of debuffs, again, pair perfectly with the spell sword kind of theme of using magic to enable our physical fighting aspects. After destruction, we're going to be sticking to that idea of using magic to enable our adventuring, and we will be taking alteration, open abilities, jump abilities, levitate, so on and so forth. And then finally here, we will be taking, again, a school that I mentioned earlier in the skill bonuses, which is mysticism, which is phenomenal, mainly for the absorb spells. Again, healing yourself, dealing damage, double whammy, totally awesome, gotta take it. Now with our majors out of the way, 
we're going to be moving into the minors. And as I say in every how-to video, please make this character your own. Make this the character you want to play. These here are simply my recommendations, my take on this particular archetype. But minor skills of Marwind, very, very flexible. That being said, if you're going the traditional 50-50 route, you can certainly take these as some inspiration. So first, I will be taking alchemy, drawing from the font of the Gind of Witcher and that classical D&D, you know, potion chugging in the middle of a fight to get some crazy buff to beat the big bad. Gotta have that on this character. Gotta have alchemy. After that, I'll be taking enchant. Again, taking the physical, buffing it with the magical, perfect for a spell sword. Third here, I'll be taking Athletics. Want to remain nimble and quick when we are in that light armor. Next, I'll be taking Illusion. And this is actually, uh, for the sake of the theme and the roleplay, not really for the things like Chameleon and Invisibility, although they are incredibly powerful in Morrowind. But if you're not trying to be a sneaky character, Illusion is still amazing to have on a spell sword because of the nice roleplay additions that come with it. Things like Night Eye, things like light. Again, enabling your adventuring with magical buffs and magical abilities. So illusion spells, certainly something you want to have in your back pocket. And then finally here, I'll be taking restoration because we will inevitably get swarmed by Batronox and Golden Saints who have a spell reflected in our face and will want to be able to heal. So there you have it, our custom class take on a spell sword. And now let's move on to selecting our birth sign. Now for me personally, there's only one clear choice here for a spell sword style character, and that is going to be the Atronach. And it may not be immediately clear why, but allow me to explain as we review our ability here. So if we look down, we can see that the Atronach grants the ability Womb Burn, which is spell absorption for 50 points, constant effect, incredibly, incredibly powerful effect. Honestly, maybe even a little bit overtuned here, as this just negates 50% of spells that hit you. We also get a 2x boost to our maximum magicka pool, and then at the bottom here, stunted magicka, which simply means we will not be able to regain magicka naturally through rests. So we will have to either absorb the spell through our innate spell absorption percentage that we do get, or via using potions. So how does this play into being a spell sword? Well, I think not being able to completely rely on a refreshing magical pool does again kind of put the onus back on being that primary fighter that's buffed via the magic. So we have that bigger magical pool so we can cast pretty much all the spells that we want a couple times, but when it comes down to the brass tacks, you're gonna have to stand and you're gonna have to fight and be that true fantasy swordsman that we all see in our head or watch on the screen. So I think not only is the Atronach a super, super strong sign, but also just thematically, it is so perfect for this style of character. Now, I do know there are plenty of Morrowind players out there who just do not jive with the stunted Magicka ability, and that is totally, totally okay. So alternatively, something that I would recommend as backups here, if you're going for more of the spell part of Spell Sword, I would recommend taking the Apprentice. I think the Mage is just a little too underpowered and a 50% weakness to Magicka you can easily get around as, again, elemental damage, which is much more common than just pure Magicka-based damage, is not affected by a weakness to Magicka. It's only affected by a weakness to that particular element. So this is not actually as bad as it sounds on paper, and I think the 1.5x boost is certainly worth that trade-off. Now, if you're trying to go for more of the sword route, I can recommend that tried and true lover sign here with our fortify agility, 25 points, and then of course the lover's kiss, which is an awesome paralyzed way to get yourself out of trouble. Now, for the sake of the video, I will be taking the Atronach and I will be showing you an easy way to get around this stunted Magicka. Maybe a little broken, maybe not. Let's get into it. So here we have it, Gerald the Dark Elf Spell Sword. Born under the sign of the Atronach, 50 to Strength, 50 to Intelligence, 40 to Int, Willpower, Agility, Endurance, and Luck. So an incredibly, incredibly balanced character and a wonderful way to start off this build. So as always in a how-to video, we're stealing the limeware. We're throwing it on the ground. We're backing up. He caught us. Can't imagine that. We're grabbing it again, and we're off on our way running. <laughs> I've done this so many times. It's honestly second nature. I could probably do this blindfolded in my sleep. I am the grand larsener of the census and excise office. <laughs> but what can I say? It's too good. The start just cannot be ignored. As all Marwin players know, gold is the only thing keeping you from unlimited power. 
much like real life. <laughs> And much like real life as well, 500 smackers is not something to turn down or shake your finger at when you're trying to get up on your feet. All right, once we're done in the simple town of Sedanine, let's go ahead and start making our way north because very close by is an item that will get the spell part of this build off to a incredible start. And since spell comes before the sword, well, it only would make sense that we're doing this piece first, right? <laughs> So basically all we've done here is head a little bit north out of town. There is the road. You pretty much just turn left as soon as you start to see this hill appear. And then we want to make our way down to the coast. Not to swim though, because that does not sound very relaxing in Vardenfell. Just getting slaughtered by slaughterfish. No thank you. Could you imagine if real peaches were like that? Like just freaking slaughterfish in the water everywhere. Does the, does the concept of a resort even exist in Vardenfell? I don't think it can. That would be like if sharks were as common as minnows. That just wouldn't work. But anyways, here we are at Samaris Ancestral Tomb just outside Sedanine. Let me show you where we are on ye old map. As you can see, just outside of the town. And now we've put on Firebite here as we have no weapons currently, but we will get through just fine, don't you worry. So now let's head down into Samaris. It's actually a very, very small tomb. There's only a couple rooms as you'll see here and probably a couple enemies. So here we go, nice ghost. Boom, one shot of Firebite. There's that destruction skill paying off, that willpower. And here we got a base bone walker. You can see we just absorbed two of his spells, the Atronach kicking in and look at that that is the power right there of the atronach spell absorption we've only used six points of magicka because we are of course absorbing the bone walker spell the atronach is is a very incredible sign but now what we're gonna do is quick save here because this trap can kill you so let's hit here oh <laughs> like i said atronach coming in clutch absorbing the trap and we can open the urn labeled lorn brin which i'll explain in another video but you can see right here, we have the Mentor's Ring, value 8,000 in a constant effect, Fortify Attribute Intelligence, 10 points, and Fortify Attribute Willpower, 10 points. So even though we've only been outside of character creation for three minutes, maybe, we've already greatly improved our spell casting chance there by boosting up the willpower and increase our magic pool by boosting up that intelligence. So now that we have gotten the spell part covered, at least for now, let's go ahead, head up back to Sedanin, take the Soul Strider to Balmora, and we'll pick it up there worrying about the sword part of the build. So now that we've made it to Balmora, again, let's start worrying about that sword part and seeing as we took Longblade, well, I think everybody knows where this is about to go. This is just the tried and true classic start to any hybrid spellcaster. Go get yourself the Mentor's Ring, head to Balmora, come over here and grab yourself the incredible Sword of White Woe, which we will find in just one second. So let's move into the guard tower here. Head up the stairs. Look at this arsenal. That always catches me off guard. I mean, thank God Warhammers. That's, we know where the budget's going for the Vardenfell taxpayer dollars, that's for sure. But let's go ahead, nestle up right here, crosshair on for a little better aiming. And then a great trick to try and grab the Sword of White Woe is actually to watch your sneak indicator in the lower left-hand corner. So you can see right here, I'm directly in front of that guard, but I'm currently in his blind spot. So let me move a little bit forward. Probably nothing. And then boom, I am no longer in the blind spot. Let me move a little bit back, boom in the blind spot because of this pillar and just the way that the clipping works. So that right there, that little indicator in the corner is the best way to tell whether you're in position or not to grab this sort of white well. Just make your life a lot easier when you're doing this start. So now all we gotta do, angle it right here, hop, grab it, boom, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look here. The Sword of White Woe, chop 4 to 26, slash 2 to 26, thrust 2 to 26, weight of 24, value of 17,000, cast when strikes, drain health of 1 to 10 points. Not a bad way to get our spell sword off and running with some great damage. So now we have the spell casting covered, we have the swords covered, but the fun isn't done yet in Balmora because, again, we took Atronach as a sign. 
So we have to deal with the fact that we're not going to have Magicka. And having a spell absorption of 50% is very, very strong. Don't get me wrong, but that still is a dice roll chance that we have to leave up to the gods out there, right? And we don't want to do that. So what we want to do is come over here to the Manor District in Balmora, and we want to go visit the alchemist Nalkaria as... A fun fact about Nalkaria is not only does she sell the second half of a Restore Magicka Potion, again, Frost Salts, Ajira sells Comeberries, but Nalkaria is one of the most important merchants for any Atronach player because, let's click Barter, type in Magicka, and you can see here that she sells exclusive Restore Magicka Potions. And ladies and gentlemen, she is a restocking merchant of exclusive Restore Magicka Potions. So let's buy this potion here, click offer, barter, again, Magicka, and she has another one. So there, ladies and gentlemen, you have as many Magicka potions as you could potentially ever hope for. And one of these puppies will take your Magicka pool from 0 to 100, even if you're using the Atronach sign. They are incredibly, incredibly great at restoring Magicka. You rarely, rarely will need to use more than one unless you're late game and just have a ridiculous Magicka pool or you've used a lot of Fortify potions or something like that. But boom, with a little bit of game knowledge, all of a sudden, the Atronach not so bad. You just need to have a couple hundred gold on you. And we know that with Morrowind, that gold comes very, very easily. Now, next up for starting here with armor, <sighs> what I will recommend is that you come and visit our little Fargoth clone here, Meldor. Speak to him because Meldor actually sells complete sets of starter light and medium armor. So if you've taken either of those skills, both of which I highly recommend for this kind of character, if you don't want to do some crazy game-breaking strat, there is a literal full set of armor waiting for you right here. So let's go ahead and fill ourselves up with our chitin items here. So there we are, 189 gold for an entire set of starter light armor. And something else that I would like to point out, simply because a lot of players often forget this, is that when you take light or medium armor, you're not really sacrificing as much armor rating as you think you are. Because armor rating in Morrowind is based off of the combination of the item's base armor rating and your skill. So the armor rating you actually see here when you are hovering over an item, see this bone mold boots with an armor rating of five, is already computed with your skill level in mind. So you might be thinking, oh, light armor, super weak. We're going to be terrible, blah, blah, blah. Th that's wrong because let's hover right over here and you can see iron boots, armor rating of three. So again, just a friendly reminder here that there are so many viable builds in Morrowind because Morrowind takes into account your skills so, so very much versus the items themselves. So even though Chitin armor here is one of the lowest light armor tiers, because I am focusing on light armor, I have a character that is specced to use it. It is incredibly viable, and I gotta say, it looks pretty freaking awesome. Pretty outlandish stuff. <laughs> All right, now next up, now that we've had our class on armor and how to look like an absolute boss here, got an awesome sword, awesome enchanted item to prop up our spell casting ability. Now let's worry about Make the actual spells outlander. themselves. So first off, I'm going to immediately join the mages guild. Yeah, sure, mages oath, uh-huh. Yeah, it's like the terms of service, right? No one reads those things. Now, before we go on that spell shopping spree that we all know is coming, I'm actually gonna cheese a little bit here because we need some money and you know how how-tos are. They're all about getting things done very, very fast. So I'm gonna do a little bit of an exploit here and I'm essentially just gonna rest until we get a Dark Brotherhood member to spawn. And oh, okay, there he is. That was pretty quick, you okay. So here he is, Dark Brotherhood. Let's go ahead, take him out here with the Sword of White Woe. It will do more damage than my Fire Bite. They are Dark Elves, so they are resistant to fire. Oh, come on, one more, one more. Oh, that was that was a terrible impression. Okay, there we go, though. Now let's, uh, you know, strip his corpse and uh, let's just get rid of the body. I don't want to upset the fine people here in the Mages Guild. Uh, they, they, well, she probably doesn't care. I actually, I actually probably did that Dark Elf a favor by disposing the yes. body. Don't want to leave it around that orc. No, no, no. She's into the necromantic arts. Let's just say that. But after killing the Dark Brotherhood there, let's go to Caldera. 
And once we are in Caldera, let's go ahead and visit our old buddy, old pal, the Creeper over here and ditch this armor because it is an incredible way to get your finances off to a running start. Let me tell you that. So boom, there you have it. 3,113 gold. So we'll take that. And the beautiful thing about having Tribunal installed is that Save. you can just keep doing that as many times as you want. As much money as you want, you can rest, spawn a Dark Brotherhood, kill him, take his armor, sell to the Creeper. Rest, spawn Dark Brotherhood, kill him, take his armor, go to the Creeper. It's actually a super busted strat, but hey, that's, that's what these videos are about, right? Teaching you a little something, showing you a little mechanics, but also, you know, peeling back the veil and showing you just how busted this game can get. But now what we're going to do is first head to Sadrath Mora now that we have joined the Mages Guild and our pockets are overflowing with gold. So let's head to Sadrath Mora and yes. let the spell shopping spree begin because there are a lot of spells that we want as a spell sword in order to again enable all of our adventuring through magical means, what this class is entirely about. So first we're gonna start by talking to Ariel here, go to spells, and we are immediately going to start by picking up Night Eye. Awesome for role playing, awesome to just have. Ariel also sells open here, so let's grab open. Let's grab Paralysis, incredible for enchanted weapons once you start making those. Let's also grab Soul Trap to buff our enchanting later. And finally, Wild Levitate, which is an awesome levitate spell to start the game off with. Now, if you're the kind of spell sword that wants conjuration, I know I didn't take it simply because it's not in my interpretation of a spell sword. I will point out that Ulaney here sells some awesome, awesome conjuration spells to start. As you can see, we have Frost Atronach here, Greater Bonewalker, the pain of all pain. The only perk here being that, you know, you'll be inflicting it on others instead of taking it yourself. If your spell sword version has conjuration, go talk to Eleni right at the start. But once we're done with the Mage's Guild, let's actually head one floor down to the Imperial Shrine. Anytime. And again, bringing around that spell I mentioned earlier in the School of Mysticism in general, we want to speak yes. to Aonius here. Go to spells and then grab potentially the best starter spell in the game, which is Absorb Health. And if you look at the stats here, I mean, this is an out of the box spell. This is not custom. They put this in here right at the start, but you can see it as a cast cost of 11, super cheap and absorbs health five to 52 points for one second on touch. If you roll max damage, you deal and heal for 52 points. What were they thinking? Okay, let's grab that. And then while you're here, you'll also want to grab Divine Intervention. And then if you don't have a Restoration spell already, maybe you picked up Hearth Heal from Arles. If not, go ahead, get Mother's Kiss. And finally, Spell Absorption, getting ready for future enchantments because we did take Atronach and the ultimate goal is not to rely on those magic potions, although you certainly can for the rest of the game, but to eventually create enchantments that give us a constant effect, 50% spell absorption to pair with our innate 50% spell absorption, then so giving us 100% so spell want? absorption, can making us not only so immune to spells, but also keeping our magicka incredibly full. And then a, a fun thing about that, just going off the spell absorption skill, there is an exploit where if you do hit that mm. gap, where you get to having 100% spell absorption, you can simply get the conjuration spell, summon ancestral ghost, summon it, punch it once or twice, and then it will sit there casting spells on you, and you simply just absorb all of your summon spells, and then now you don't even have to worry about having any restore magic potions ever. So spell absorption can get really busted really, really easily. But with that being said, let's go ahead, head back to Balmora, and then the final person we want to talk to is Moraine Dren, because he sells our weakness spells here. And if you want to make your Sword of White Woe even more effective, what you can do, again, sticking to this hybrid caster idea, physical damage enabled by the spells is to stack weakness effects based on the elements that you're using. So we're using the Sword of White Woe, which deals magicka damage. So we want to buy a weakness to magicka spell as it will make our sword hit that much harder. 
And this goes for any weapon that you have in the game. If you end up getting, you know, Ice Blade of the Monarch or Gold Brand, you want to start your fights by casting a targeted weakness effect as you close in on your target and then pulling out your enchanted weapon to punch through the hole that you just made in your opponent's defenses. And now after Marion, let's wrap up our... Oh, lady, come on. Hey, I'm recording a video. All right, jeez. No one respects my work in this universe. What's it take for a man to get some credit around here? I mean, come on. Outland. But getting back to it again, to wrap up our almost all-encompassing spell list here for effects that we want to start with, let's polish off the list by heading to the Balmora Temple and grabbing just a couple more spells here. Ones that folks are, are very, very familiar with. So once we're inside, let's head down the stairs here, and then we'll want to speak to each person over here. Latino, go to spells. And then you'll want to buy Almsivi Intervention as well as Recall, which I seem to have run out of money, but this is where you get it for the purpose of the guide. I'll go ahead, grab Almsivi. There's Recall. And then just over here on the other side of the room, you can see that we have Mark. So if you follow that shopping spree and manage your money, maybe 100 gold better than I did, you will have pretty much every spell that you need to get off to an incredible start here. So now that we've handled our armor, buffed our spell casting ability, we have an incredible weapon to start with. So how are we gonna end today's video? Well, that would be with an incredible artifact and one that's definitely additive to the spell sword build, but also will show a, a really cool hidden mechanic from Marwin Say that I don't think a lot of people know about. So let's start making our way over to the Silt Strider, to Vivek, and then to Malagmar. Now, once we've arrived in Malagmar, we want to head southwest out of town and actually to this island here, as there is a very fun artifact that I think not a lot of people know about waiting for us. And although our build is already awesome, you can't end a how-to video from me without a cool centerpiece artifact. So back on the road, I say, more adventure. If you're not doing it for anyone, do it for Geralt, our namesake. He likes adventuring and killing stuff. And, you know, we haven't done any of that yet, so we got to get some blood on the blades. Oh, and here it starts. As soon as I mention it now, we can bring our Witcher training out to the forefront. Slaying monsters. Gerald the Witcher proving himself. Oh, back off, heathen. I'll be in Karamoran in no time. Uh, that objectively horrible place that is uh, super drafty and disgusting and way past its prime. But hey, if you're playing Marwin, hey, well, we all are too. So we can't, uh, we can't say too much, I guess. <laughs> so I just put on our absorb health because I do want to show how freaking ridiculous this spell is to have here at level one. So let's go over to this cliff racer. I know approaching a cliff racer willingly, crazy. But for the sake of the demo, let, let's, let's show this spell. So you can see we're hurting, we're feeling it. Touch the cliff racer, boom. We're at full health, it's almost dead. And it costs like no magicka, it's ridiculous. So there we are, boom, full health. It's a ridiculous spell to have, it, it really is. <laughs> Honestly, off camera when I was testing this build, I killed the entire Balmora's Mages Guild alone using just absorb health and I think one exclusive restore magicka potion. That's how strong this thing is. Because even if it's reflected back onto you, you don't take any damage because you're draining your health to restore your health. So you just net zero. So it kills them, it's cheap, it can't hurt you, and it's honestly just one of the best spells in the game. Boom. Case in point, one shot the slaughterfish, back to full health. It's, it's busted, people. What can I say? All right, so there our island is dead ahead. Getting nice and close here. It's honestly not that bad of a walk out of Malagmar. You just gotta island hop effectively or, or you know, use levitate or, or water walking so you don't have to deal with all the slaughterfish to get down here. So now let's hop on land and give our spell sword a final test here at the dungeons of Ashur Badan. Let's grab a rest just to get our fatigue back and then let's hop inside and hope for the best. So let's enter in. I am going to do a bit of absorb health to start, just because this guy hurts. And if he hits us, we're gonna need to heal through it, which we did just there. Look, we actually are taking no health damage. And there you go. Just shows you how absorb health can make you punch way above your weight class. If we had just been fighting him straight up at level one, he would have annihilated us. But the combination of the Atronach with the heals is allowing us to tank through. All right, so let's move deeper and Draymore Lord. Okay, so uh, again, buffing ourselves with magical abilities, 
to do physical fighting. So let's start before we do anything. Popping our Ancestor Guardian ability that we get from being a Dark Elf Sanctuary. Gonna make it harder for us to get hit. Next, Dire Weakness to Magicka. Let's start the fight with this. Open the door again for our other Magicka damage. All right, this is a targeted spell, so I should be able to shoot it at him. Oh, he reflected it. Okay, that's bad. All right, let's get our health pool back, starting with Absorb. Do some damage. All right, health's back up. Health's back down. Health's back up. <laughs> that spell is so good. All right, here we go. We're getting some shots in, getting some shots in. Let's absorb again. He's almost dead. That sanctuary is paying dividends. Look at that damage that we're doing with the Sword of White Woe. Weakness to Magicka paying off and boom, just like that, level one. If you start stacking those magical effects on your character, your physical fighting ability just immediately goes through the roof. It is absolutely awesome. But let's search the Draymora here. Just a Dwarven Claymore. Still sells pretty good, so we'll take that. And then let's pop a look in the ancient chest here. Grab the old key, some gold, and then eh, just a couple normal potions here. Nothing too exciting. And then let's direct our attention over here as we need to continue deeper into the dungeon. So let's pop that Restore Magicka potion that we brought in. Use the Rising Force potion that we got out of the chest so that we preserve our Magicka. And then, okay, another Frost Atronach. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before and set ourselves up with our Absorb Health because we just need to get through the damage that this guy's gonna put out. Cause at level one, we're just, we just don't really stand a straight up chance fighting him. But our Atronach is putting in a ton of work and boom, like that, got through him. Let's keep moving in here. Get our sword out. Here's a lock level 35 and trapped. So let's grab our open spell, cast that. There we go. Sweet. Okay. This, <laughs> hey, this birth sign is a little overtuned. Maybe not. You be, you be the judge of that. All right. So what we want to do is drag the Atronach out. So we want them to waste their Magicka. So come on, buddy. Come on. Follow the leader, right? Because we basically just don't want to fight them and the other enemy at the same time. And we can just wait out his spell casts. He should be getting low here. Yep, there we go. All right, let's put on the shield, make this a more personal affair. But we'll just use the same strat that we did with the Frost Atronach. And that is just heal through their damage. Come on, one more hit, one more hit. Okay, there we go. Atronach down. All right, let's reposition here. All right, now let's get more spell absorption on. Oh, we failed. Okay, I don't want to get too low. All right, let's let her miss that. All right, now it's just a straight up fight. <clears throat> And then, ladies and gentlemen, this right here, this is why we take long blade, athletics, light armor, because if we hold our movement right, we can just juggle her, and she can't fire back. And this is why we do what we do. This is why I harp on things like this. Getting a little low, let's absorb. Look at that, and then we're done. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. This is why being a spell sword, a hybrid spell caster is so freaking OP and so freaking fun. There's so many combinations of spells and effects that you can combine and you can make any situation summitable. But let's see why we came down here. And that is because Vindamia Drathen here has an artifact known as the Warlock's Ring. Value 22,000 in a cast when used ability. Reflect 10 to 20% for 30 seconds on self. And fortify attribute speed 10 to 20 points for 30 seconds on self. Both of which support two of the ideals that this build has been following since the beginning. Guarding ourselves from spells and staying nimble and quick. And boy how we saw those two things were incredibly important in that fight right there. So another awesome thing to tack on to our nimble, light, spellcasting fighter. But the thing I wanted to talk about and the mechanic I wanted to bring up here is a Warlock's Ring has a Reflect ability on it. And our Birth Sign gave us a Spell Absorption ability. So how do these two things play in? Well, when you have a Reflect effect and a Spell Absorption effect on at the same time, that essentially means you have 
two chances to either absorb or reflect the spell. And whichever chance comes first is based on the effect that you had active first. So because we always will have this constant effect on and have had it on since we created our character, we will first have a 50% chance to absorb any spell that hits us. And if we use our Warlock's Ring or a different Reflect ability, we then get another 20% chance to try and save ourselves from the spell. And if this dungeon did not prove how important it is to have either spell absorption or reflect abilities on, then I, I don't know how to illustrate it any better to you. But ladies and gentlemen, there it is. That is our spell sword build, at least my own personal take on it. And I know just based on the nature of something like spell sword, it's not as archetypical as a warrior and means something different to everybody else. So share your personal favorite build choices here on the spell sword in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and go try this build out for yourself. I'll catch you on the next one.